everybody. Dan from South Hawk Computing is back again for hopefully one of many tech videos. Today we're going to discuss pretty much laptop longevity, the do's and don'ts, and what will make your laptop essentially last the longest. Um, so let's get right into it. Number one, keep the lid of your laptop open as long as possible. Now what do I mean by that? Basically, if you don't have to close the lid, couple things are going to happen. Uh, you basically are going to run into issues with your wearing out the hinges. So this nice firm display won't uh, hold itself. It'll constantly be flapping around or it won't hold at all. You also have the potential of uh, rubbing the cables wrong inside of the actual laptop itself. So what will that do? Well, it controls the video. You might get some weird artifacting on the screen. Uh, the light may kick out because of the wire. Essentially, there's a lot of things that could go wrong the more times you do this. I know it's it's nice and convenient when you're done with the laptop, you put it away, you close it, whatever. But, I mean, if you can help it, don't close the lid. It'll make your laptop last that much longer. Number two on the list is get yourself a solid state hard drive. Now, what does that mean exactly? Before we get into that, let's talk about what laptops typically have. A traditional hard drive like this guy here essentially is, if you flip it over, it has a motor that spins a disc pretty much like a record player or a CD player with a head that's reading at different points of the drive. Well, what happens over the time is this motor could wear down, uh, you jostle your laptop and that head that's reading gets slammed into the disc causing errors. And basically this would be the quote unquote slowest part of your laptop. So your laptop is only going to be as fast as its slowest component, so that's the culprit right there. Nine times out of ten, people think their laptops are a piece of garbage when they actually have a pretty decent laptop. And they go spend another $500 when a solid-state hard drive here uh, for 120 gigs at the time of this video costs about 60 bucks, which is way affordable uh, in comparison to buying a new laptop. But so now what makes the solid state hard drive different from this guy here? Well, for starters, there's no motor. This is all chips. There's no spinning disk. There's no head that reads the data. It just goes. There's um, essentially no delay time for searching uh, for spots on the disk, reading and writing. So all the information is instantly accessible and you get uh, crazy boot times and loading. So now this won't make your internet faster but it makes the machine pretty much operate at its full potential. There's no waiting time of spinning the disk, finding the data on the drive, pulling the data, and writing the data to empty spots. So just by doing this, and you'll see in plenty of my videos of customers who are upgrading to solid-state hard drives, how big of a performance boost this is going to be for you. Uh, the best part, too, is if you have one of these guys, you don't have to worry about jostling the laptop uh, because there is no mechanical components into this. I could do this all day uh, with, within reason and not damage the drive which if I tried knocking this guy here that head for the drive would be slamming against uh, the disc all over the place. Uh, one other additional benefit to this uh, uh, traditional solid state drive is there's again no motor so this actually consumes less power in theory, you get a little bit of extra battery life out of your laptop as well. So now this also, again, could apply to desktops. Uh, the same is true as far as uh, performance versus a traditional and solid state hard drive. Next on the list is exercising your laptop battery. Now, what do I mean by this? Basically, when your laptop has a full charge, you're going to unplug the adapter from the wall and use your laptop on battery power. You're going to continue to use it until your laptop starts complaining that it needs to be plugged in. Once that's happened, you plug it back in and you let it fully charge back. I recommend doing this at least twice a month to get the full potential out of your battery. Next on the don't do it list, don't operate your laptop on any sort of fabric. Things like blankets, pillows, or anything that will pretty much not allow your computer to breathe. Now, if we look in this example here, I'm going to flip this laptop over. I took the covers off the back plane, but 
there's vents that go over these fans. These fans need to pull on air to cool off the processor as well as the graphics card. When you put a blanket, cushion, or any sort of uh, fabric on the bottom part of this laptop, it can't pull on air, can't cool off the processor, and or the, the graphics card. So what happens here is, A, if you're lucky enough, the laptop's going to abruptly shut off to protect itself from burning out, or B, essentially burned out some of the components, leaving you with a very hefty repair bill. So again, what you want to do is, the rec recommended device, whatever you want to call it, is a lap desk. It's a hard material. It'll allow the uh, laptop to breathe properly and cool itself properly. And you can pick them up anywhere from CVS to Walmart to Target. Next up, you have to be mindful of the laptop's power cord at all times. It could get caught up on your foot, on a chair leg or whatever, creating some tension on the line and then when you go to lift your laptop, it could break the connector inside the laptop. So you want to make sure that at all times that you have plenty of slack on the line. Uh, last thing you need to do is break the connector within the laptop. And if it's connected to the logic board of the laptop, it's pretty much dead at that point. It's going to cost you almost an arm and a leg between parts and labor to get it replaced. I quickly wanted to mention if you have an Apple laptop, this is a non-issue for your users. It has a nice magnet-based uh, design, so that if there's any sort of strain on the physical line, it's designed to pop right off. Still should be careful, obviously, but um, you, you have a less of a chance of breaking the physical connector inside the uh, Apple's uh, laptop's mainboard with uh, this particular uh, power, power cord design, that is. Next on your checklist, see how much RAM your laptop has. Right here we have two examples of two different types of memory sticks that could go in a possible laptop here. But don't get confused with your laptop's hard drive that we were talking about before. Hard drive is where you store um, your photos, your documents, your music, and all that fun stuff. RAM is basically what the computer needs to get all these instructions done on your computer. If it doesn't have enough, it's going to start to slow down and really kill performance. Just like to add also that current requirements for operating systems, it's going to be about a minimum of 4 gigs. But if your laptop is capable of supporting more, definitely put in more, such as 8 or 16 if you can. Next up, and this is the one of the top repairs that I get all the time for laptops. Keep drinks away from the laptop. I know I'm laughing here, but this is actually kind of serious. I can't tell you exactly how many times I find or I have people frantically calling me about them spilling some sort of beverage on their laptop. Best rule of thumb here is keep the drinks away. And finally on the checklist, do yourself a favor and buy yourself a can of compressed air. Essentially, dust is the enemy. You don't want it clogging up the vents for the air intake on your laptop to help it uh, cool it properly. Especially if you have pets. This will actually tend to clog up a lot quicker than normal because of all the dander. Um, just a word of caution though, obviously when you turn the can at a certain angle, liquid does tend to fire out and that's the last thing you want to do. Um, also make sure when you're doing this that the laptop is off. Last thing you need to do is do any permanent damage while the machine is running and then a little bit of that liquid actually sprayed onto the, the machine itself. All right, well, that pretty much sums it up. I hope these tips are very helpful for you and they give you a better insight in your uh, laptop there. If you found this uh, video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And while you're at it, might as well just subscribe to the channel. This is Dan here from South Hall Computing saying until the next time.